Harrison, I'm back with uh, another exclusive interview for you, the Inner Circle of the Gotham Dating Club, with, with another true, true guru of the game. We're really lucky to have him, none other than Richard Lahina. And uh, did, I, did I say your name right, Richard? No, it's uh, La Ruina. So you say the R, it's not like um, Portuguese, where it would be like an H. They call me Richard in, in, Portu in Brazil. I was say Brazilian, I was say fala Portuguese. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. <laughs> we can do it all in a different language and then forget about it. Nah. All right. Well, yeah. Well, we're really, we're really lucky to have you. Th on behalf of myself, on behalf of Craig, on behalf of all our members, thanks again for offering to, to take a little bit of time to talk to us and to go a little bit deeper into the last really, really awesome presentation you gave for the Gotham Dating Club at at the dating conference. And uh, so we we have some follow up questions for you. But okay. uh, real quick, like I mean. Uh, in in terms of you and your game, you know you you've been doing this for a long time and, and you you you've, you've gotten into this. But before before I, I shoot my questions at you, we just sort of wanted to ask you like where are you at right now? Like what's what what aspect of the game are you most interested in right now? Um, actually, if you look at my life, the there's very little um, that looks like pickup. So I don't go out to do you know, 20 approaches, and I'm not friends with um, any PUA guys, and I have lots of female friends. I've tried to build, um, you know, a good social circle um, so that there are always good people around, beautiful girls. Actually, not many guys at the moment. And a lot of the way I was thinking today, you know, about how, how I've met, you know, the the last, I don't know, 20 girls, let's say, that, that I've been involved with. And it's been a real variety of ways. So, yes, some have been in the bars or clubs um, in the street, but a lot of them have been in, you know, strange ways through, uh, through friends, connections, by being invited to cool events, uh, things like that. So it's, it's, it's really varied, and I, I think it doesn't it doesn't look much like you know it did when I was starting and and traditional pickup where you know you're just trying to do a lot of approaches. Right on, right on. So so the game has evolved a lot for you, and um. So but anyway, like because this this isn't this is this is more or less for people who are beginning and and a little bit more intermediate. We we all have a lot more work to do before we start reaching your level. I would think. But um, so let's let's jump right into to some follow up questions from from the last interview. And so mm -hmm. you you talked about how inner game comes from outer game. You know, you take someone who's feeling bad, you get them laid a bunch, and you won't be feeling quite so bad anymore. So, um, you talk we talked a little bit about uh, getting out of these these negative states and getting into that positive social kind of state. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any uh, good Tips, good suggestions that you use, or maybe other other guys who who you know who are good at this, to get out of that those negative kind of mind states and, and get to that positive uh, critical feedback that starts to make you feel more bulletproof. Yeah, I think it's um, it's important. I mean, the reason I said that in in the talk was that I didn't want to dwell on in a game because I think in a game is something you can talk about for fifty hours. Uh, theoretically, and maybe guys will feel really good after that, like they're learning something. But will they? Will they have any, you know, big changes? Mm, maybe, maybe not. So, uh, when I when I think about in a game, it's not something, you know, like going to a psychoanalyst and talking for twenty years about your problems. Um, I I wanted to be kind of on the other end of the spectrum to that, and so for me in the past, what really helped was. Um, incremental positives and, and building on those and of course there would be setbacks but always keeping things moving so look at your life and it shouldn't only be in the realm of women and dating it should be in general the things that make you unsatisfied and unhappy so it could be that you're just sitting at house, in your house all the time you're not doing anything sociable it could be that um, you know you're not in good shape you don't dress well it could be lots of things and all of these things affect your confidence when we um, when we've done work with guys and we've done some kind of image 
transformation with them, we see that after that they have a, a renewed uh, swagger, you know, they, they have a better energy, they get more attention from women than because of that. So I would say, you know, write down all of the things you're unsatisfied with and come up with some ways to to work on each one and just look at it on a daily basis when you can but when you have setbacks kind of look a bit longer you know go back to a weekly or monthly basis mm -hmm. as long as you've got um, progress you should continue moving your inner game or happiness or confidence you know in the right direction so um, for me you know I didn't get any results in the beginning for quite a while in, in terms of you know, meeting a girl and having sex with her. That didn't happen for quite a while. But what did happen was uh, women from went from kind of turning away immediately to smiling and kind of talking with me, um, laughing sometimes, you know, not at me but with me and having some good interactions. And I was looking for just these incremental positives and to keep building on them as well as in general working on myself, reading lots of books, uh, learning new skills and um, getting more comfortable in different situations. So I think you can take a, an active approach to in a game if you're feeling unhappy or unconfident. Um, I don't think... Active approach. Yeah, I think the active approach will, will work very well. For anyone that's not you know, crazy or has got real mental problems, the active approach I, I really think is the way to go. Right on. So are there any like quick uh, ways that you use to warm up? Like you're going out, maybe you had a really crappy, crummy day for whatever reason, and uh, is, is there any like quick tricks you use just to kind of get that quick confident boost so that you feel good going out so you can start the, the positive feedback cycle? Um, not to sound cocky, but no, not anymore. But So I have to go back in time, and um, I think that what I used to do was I used to try and have a lot of um, positive associations and kind of stack those together. So it could be listening to music while I'm getting ready, having some aftershave that I only wear on this thing so that the smell is, you know, even associated with um, good nights out, mm -hmm. having people around me that are uh, chosen not because they're good wingmen or because they are, you know, they have 5,000 forum posts or whatever, it, karma on the forum or whatever it might be, but just because uh, they put me in a good mood and they make me smile and feel good because the moment when you do your best approaches or have your best interactions with women will be just after you've had something, you know, very funny happen, you're laughing, you're in that good state uh, with your friend and then you turn, you look at her and you've got this positive emotion, uh, she responds well to it and, you know, and it's on from there. Uh, so is stacking all, all of those things together, choosing the same location, having good things happen, having mm. the right people around you, um, dressing good and feeling good, you know, in yourself, and using music, you can use affirmations, you can use anything that gets you in state, a YouTube uh, clip or whatever it might be, some uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger quotes, whatever it would be that would, you know, get you in the in the in the Positive zone. Figures. And go from there and try and make it like a ritual. You know, it's not it's not embarrassing mm -hmm. because uh, great sportsmen and you know, lots of people use this kind of ritual thing before they need to perform. Ritual is the word there, I think. That's that's really interesting. So right on, like, you know, create positive rituals for yourself. That was that was very comprehensive. Thank you. And so I want to just jump jump ahead a little bit. You, um, in, in the presentation you gave, you talked a lot about uh, really, really effective connection techniques. Mm -hmm. And this was this was cool. It, it was it was about actively connecting. This this whole active theme is something that comes up a lot. I notice with your approach to this. And so instead of just sort of looking through your memory bank and coming up with some experience you've had to relate to whatever it is you just said, you should be asking yourself what type of person would do this. Mm -hmm. How would someone feel doing this? What are they, why are they getting out of the, the emotions? And then why would they do it? You know, so we're looking at character traits, emotions, and motivations. And now we're thinking about these questions when women give us this piece of information, we're feeding the, the what we come up with back to her in sentences in some ways. And so this was great. I love this. I've definitely, you know, used this myself. And um, I wanted to, uh, to ask the question a little bit. Uh, I wanted to apply this, this connection technique to a slightly different environment. So now what if we're in a louder environment? Would this connection technique work the same way? Or is there, are there other 
techniques we use? Is this is this more when the IOI would have to come into play? Yeah, I think you don't want to be uh, a conversation in general is a lower energy, right? So um, the more of a monologue and the longer her answers or your answers, um, the the lower the energy will be. So it really isn't for that kind of uh, bar club environment for sure, and in those environments because there's there's kind of a lot of uh, stimulus. It's really about nonverbal nonverbal energy, and if you are speaking, it's just saying it with the right facial expressions and doing things to to convey, um, you know, to raise her energy and make her feel something. So mm. no, I wouldn't I wouldn't connect with a girl at midnight. Um, in a noisy bar or at 2 a.m. in a in a noisy club, unless we went to sit down in a quiet area. So yeah, it really it really does depend on the environment, and I think you're um, you need to bear in mind. You know, if you're doing day game, it's very different from night game, and if you're doing uh, you know you're in kind of a chilled bar versus a, a noisy place, it's it's different again. Right on. So I mean, like those those connection techniques would happen sort of after you, you've gotten out of a louder environment, you know, when when it would come to a night game situation. So let me let's let's talk a little bit more about uh, the IOI, you know, an indicator of interest. And this was this was something really interesting you talked about because this is something I haven't played with that much. But uh, you talk about this as being a way to figure out if she's friendly or standoffish. Before you even approach her, so it's almost like the conversation is starting before you even approach. And I, I, you had a friend, I believe his name was Steve, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And, yeah, and he would do like a little silly dance on the floor somehow. I can't even, I can't even imitate it. But then he would point at her. You do like maybe some little shooter fingers or something, get her to laugh, and then he'd walk up to her and take her hand or something like that. And so yeah. it was a very simple process you you left you laid out. It's like do something to attract attention to yourself. And do yeah. something that forces a response from her. Wave, maybe. Yeah. Give a thumbs up. Gauge your reaction. And then you can calibrate your approach mm -hmm. um, on how to, how, to, how to make the best possible first impression. So yeah. similarly, you know, I, I sort of asked the last question about connection techniques out of context in a louder environment. And I wanted to ask this question about IOIs, which work really good in a louder environment. Let's sort of flip it around. How would you use an IOI like during day game when you're walking in the street and things are things are a little bit more hectic, perhaps people passing each other by, you know? Yeah, it's it's interesting because in a in a bar, if you're walking through the crowd and you're in her field of vision, she will look at you, even for a millisecond. But she will just even maybe. Um, you know, out of the corner of her eye, not directly, but she will, you know, make some judgment about you. In the daytime, um, it's actually much more common that people don't uh, check out everyone that's walking by. Uh, they can keep their head down, they can be looking at their phone, so um, it is harder. And this is going to sound quite silly, but if you're walking down the road and you're eating an apple or you're eating an ice cream or you're uh, doing something, you're much more likely to to get attention. If you're walking at a different pace, very quickly and decisively, or you know, very slowly in a in a hectic pace. Um, if you have elaborated gestures, like you need to look at your watch and you kind of flick your arm out and then do it, this is actually the only way um, to ensure that most women will look at you as you as they walk by. You can you can do these kinds of silly things when you want to get that re that attention and have her look at you in the cases where she wouldn't. In some cases, when the you know it's quite a, it's a quiet street and you're walking um, along there. Again, women might not look at you because it's a little bit intimidating to lock eyes um, with a, a lone guy when they're alone. That's why guys might notice they get more looks when they're with uh, when the women are actually with a man because mm. they're comfortable doing it because they're with a man or with their friends. Likewise, if you're with someone, she'll feel more comfortable looking because she doesn't expect that you can break off your interaction and go to her. But if both of you are looking at her, then she won't. But if your friend is kind of looking at you or n not looking at her, and then you do, she might look. So there's lots of uh, little variations in there. And IOIs is something uh, you can't use as well in the daytime. Um, I think guys that do 
day game pickup are expecting that um, nothing too bad is going to happen. It's not going to be too embarrassing like it would be in the club where all of the people uh, that see what happens are then still there <laughs> and you either have to you know deal with it or not. So um, bad things are not so bad that can happen in the daytime. You can use IOIs. I used to walk along the street with a, a Voss bottle, you know, that big glass um, water bottle thing. It was designed by Calvin Klein or something, so it's, it looks quite cool. And um, I would cut some lemons and put it in and be walking down the road drinking this. And everyone looked, obviously. And then if a girl looks, I can kind of give her a cheeky look, see if she smiles or something. And if she's already kind of past me, I can go back after her. If there's enough room, you know, in front, I can start interacting with her then. But I don't want to advise guys that they should all walk down the road, you know, eating huh. strange things or, or doing things to get attention. In general, there will be less IOIs. You will get more if you're on, a, on the phone, if you have some, you know, something that draws attention. Um, but in general, you should be more ready to do a completely cold approach in the street. Interesting. I, this is one of those interviews where I'm going to have to like go back and, and watch it again and take notes just for my own benefit because this is really, really fun stuff we're talking about now. I mean, so it's, it, if, if I may, I mean, it almost sounds like silliness is sort of a key to, to getting a good IOI out of a woman, like just doing yeah. something a little unconventional. People are bored, and women a lot of the times in the bars and clubs, they're just trying to look... Uh, elegant and sexy, but it's all too serious, and people at heart are actually not that serious. So, if you can do something playful, and she's gonna smile, you're, you know, you're in a much better, much better position. And um, being playful and silly goes all the way through. It's much easier to escalate sex sexually, for example, when you're doing it in a, in a slightly playful way. Playfulness. Mm -hmm. Silliness, playfulness. These, this is this is all great stuff. Cool. So, I'm almost feeling like we're getting some sort of a, of, a, of a process out of out of all this. It's like we kind of started talking about inner game and how to get out of some bad inner game, you know, habits and into you know a, a more positive state of mind. We we looked at that a little bit, and then we kind of flip we flipped the process a little, around a little bit. But I feel like in IOIs is even more important to start playing with before you even work on an approach, depending on the situation, loud or quiet environment. But then these connection techniques we talked about also. So, so just sort of looking at the process again a little bit, before I ask you about escalating, I wanted to, to throw the question at you, because we, we ended the, the last presentation talking about signs that she's down to fuck. So... Mm -hmm. Um, you talked a little, and this is, I, lo I love all these little body language sign things you talk about, like, so if women, like, aren't facing each other, if they're kind of looking around the room, if they're not fully engaged when someone new comes over and she's still kind of looking around, maybe she's showing a lot of flesh. But then, like, you know, like, after you made the approach, if, like, she lets you hold her hand, you know, like, after you've taken her hand, she lets you take her around the bar, take you to other places. And, of course, like, if, you know she's talking to you and her friends start to leave and she doesn't care that her friends are leaving, obviously you know, you know something's on. Mm -hmm. So, um, different situations, like we, a, a lot of these signs that she's DTF, um, could these apply to like, you know, the day and the night situations again? Well, I don't think girls are really DTF in the, in the daytime too often. Right. I, I don't think women are thinking sexually in in those situations most of the time. So, um... Bummer. It's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of an ego thing where I could say, oh look, I can pull a girl home from the street and have sex with her in the daytime, look how great of a PUA I am or something, but in reality for the, for the average guy, if you want fast sex, you go to a club. And if you want to meet girls that don't go to clubs and get uh, solid numbers and dates and whatever, then, you know, you do it in the daytime. Right on. Okay. So, 
In terms of, you know, finding someone who's DTF in the first place, like, focus on your night game skills. I, I think that's sort of the bottom line there. Yeah, I think so. And I think a lot of guys these days uh, neglect night game. I think in the in the early days of Mystery Method, it was all about night game, so there's a big focus on night game. Now there's a lot of, um, you know, YouTube videos and stuff showing day game. And a lot of guys say, I'm not going to do night game because I don't like noisy places and things like that. And they do some day game they see is quite easy, and so they stick to it. But I think they're losing a big, um, a big part of the skill set because night game teaches you a lot, and you can actually get away with um, being quite lame in, in day game and still get some results. Uh, so I do, I do think guys should um, should push themselves to to do some night game as well, just to get the you. It's it's a much harsher environment, and you need to be on point in many many ways. So um, getting to the point where you have good night game in general means that you should be cool and uh, more well calibrated and more sensitive to. Uh, cues and it, it socially intelligent and it, it just helps in in many ways. That's a, that, that 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 observation is so interesting. I, I feel like I'm tempted just to deviate from the interview just a little bit to ask, do you do you see like this this interest in like game declining like all across the globe or is this like a New York specific thing? Because I feel like nightlife in New York alone like over the past decade or so has gone down. And so it's just like I feel like a lot of the coaches out here are just kind of focusing more on the daytime stuff. I think it's just a, a trend, and in general, um, the interesting game is. I think there may be fewer core PUA fans, but on the other hand, it's it's also got a wider audience of guys that don't really know what PUA is, but they're mm -hmm. you know buying products and things because they want to be better with women. Interesting, 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 interesting. Cool. Okay, so sort of along with the same sort of you know question, taking taking certain skills out of uh, situations and, and straining these insights. So escalation was something else we talked a lot about in your in your last presentation, and we talked about how the escalation really starts at the approach. You know, the playfulness and touching is what makes it acceptable. Like, you know, you're touching, like, hand, arm, shoulder, back, socially acceptable places. And you want to start doing that from the outset to show her that you're, you're comfortable doing this and that you're not desperate or needy, that it's not a big deal for you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the playfulness aspect of this comes from showing that you're such a sexual person that you can even make fun of yourself while you're kind of doing it. You can kind of be a stereotype of yourself almost. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, you talked about how you don't even need to know anything about positive signs. As long as you know how to recognize negative signs, you'll be okay. So it's like, am I escalating? Yes. Is she reacting negatively? No. If no, continue. Mm -hmm. So, again, bringing this insight into the day game, the night versus day. Uh, we talk about that the day game isn't really a full interaction. It's really about finding a good reason to see each other again and that we shouldn't sexually escalate physically during the day game. So, uh, but we also know that the escalation should start with the approach. So what should the, the sexual escalation look like during the day game? I would imagine that this might have more to do with verbal escalation. Is, is it more about flirting during the day? And uh, do you, are, there, are there any good like day game like appropriate uh, escalation techniques that we should be experimenting with? You see, there's a lot of different ways to do it, and in in the daytime, uh, you can get a good number in five to seven minutes, a solid number, and the strength and confidence of approaching in the daytime, the unexpectedness of it, combined with some you know good body language and eye contact, um, actually takes away the need for. Any anything too you know full on, and of course it's five to seven minutes. Um, if you're going for something you know a longer interaction, and you get an opportunity to uh, invite her somewhere and sit with her, for example, then yeah, I think it starts to get time when you can um, be flirtatious, maybe sexual misinterpretation. Um, teasing her and things like that. I mean, something like teasing 
even when it's not sexual, is kind of sexual. Uh, you know, it gets that, that right kind of uh, response. Um, but in most cases, you have to remember that when a woman is looking to, into a man's eyes and thinking of kissing him, um, it's, it's not normally when she's talking to him on a street and when she's thinking about even meeting a guy. That's why a lot of the reactions in day game are initially like, what? Why are you talking to me? What do you want? And so you need you know, that time to get her relaxed and used to it and you can escalate from there. But you know, simply loud, you know, some music, uh, some sexy clothes that she spent a lot of time getting ready, some mental preparedness that she's going on a date, um, some alcohol, all of these things uh, set a better stage for um, escalating sexually. So what I have always tried to do is um, take the, the day game um, numbers and meet them you know, spend five, seven minutes, whatever it would, would be in the daytime, and then uh, next time see them in the nighttime with all of the ingredients in place um, to allow escalation. If you were actually trying to do it in the daytime, then you can take her for a coffee, sit somewhere where you can sit next to her, and you know, you've you've got you've got just as much chance. It's just as as valid. Um, it's just a little bit um, unusual. She won't have many memories of, of things like that happening. First kisses being, you know, in the daytime in coffee shops and stuff. But you know, it, it's still, it's still possible, and, and that's how you would do it. So go for the insta date if you're trying yeah. to escalate during the day. Then then I, it becomes I think it goes back to my place in the daytime, and they've been fine with it. Um, but it just doesn't feel, it feels like you're pushing more. It doesn't mean you can't get the result, but it doesn't, you know, it feels like it's more due to you pushing and being very smart versus in the nighttime where it can just flow because it's kind of normal. Right on. So I think that the big thing I'm getting out of this is don't neglect the nighttime skills. Like, it's, it's interesting. Like, there, there is this sort of trend uh, towards the day game these well, days. Something. If, you know, how many guys do you know that go out and do a lot of day game, do tons of approaches, get quite a lot of numbers, but don't actually sleep with many girls? Sure. Sure, that happens. <laughs> right on. Well, I can sit here and, and, and pick your brain all day. Uh, it's it's this is this is like really for me like a, a big personal learning experience as well. But uh, the last question before we, we wrap up is always an open ended question. We want to know uh, what you're working on now. Uh, we we want to give you the chance to let let the people know about anything you want to promote. Okay, so website is puatraining.com. We have various products. You know, in a game, night game, day game, um, and Got my book that's been out for many years. It's out in you know Brazilian Portuguese. It's in Chinese, German, Italian. Uh, so whatever your preferred language, you can probably find it. And it's called The Natural. Um, aside from that, nothing too much going on. You know, I'm I'm proud of everything we've created over the years, and I always try to make it best in class. Uh, on YouTube, also got lots of free videos if you're the kind of guy that doesn't want to spend money. So, <laughs> right on. Well, Richard, I gotta tell you, this has been a, a real, true privilege and an honor. Thank you very much for for taking some time to talk to us on this this, this holiday week. And uh, yeah, anything else you you gotta say before we sign off? No, that's cool. Thanks to all the guys that watched it this far, and it was good to speak to you, man. Thank you. Absolutely, Rich. Yo, on behalf of myself, on behalf of the Gotham Dating Club and Craig Miller, thanks a lot, Rich. And uh, we'll see the rest of you next time. See you.